Anybody believe God is good? We worship you because you are good. You are good all the time, and all the time God is good. I believe there is a word from the Lord on today. You will turn with me to Luke chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. If you will open your Bible apps, you'll stand to your feet for the reading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. The word of the Lord reads, Now, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum, and a centurion servant, who was dear unto him, was sick and ready to die. When he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying, that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with him, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned him about, and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not Israel. And they that were sent returning to the house found the servant whole that had been sick. I want to tag this particular text by simply saying, say a word. Say a word, Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Would you bow with me? Gracious, kind, holy, just God, we thank you for another opportunity to approach the throne of grace. God, I ask that you would hide me behind the cross. Let the people hear your voice. Let them feel your presence and your power. God, I ask that you would use me to speak a word in this house on today. God, I ask that the ears of the hearers might be open to hear what thus said the Lord on today. God, I ask that this word may not fall on deaf ears, but it might fall on fertile ground. God, breathe upon this word right now. Sign your name upon it. In Jesus' most precious holy name, I do pray. Let all the people of God say amen. Yes and no are two of the most simple words of our English language. They are words that even the youngest of minds can comprehend. Many babies' first form of communication besides laughing and crying is the word no. For these words to be so simplistic, they are very powerful. Even if you aren't able to utter these words, you can signal these words with your body language. These words are significant in the spirit realm and on this journey we call life. As Christians, we must understand that there are some things that people will try to speak over your life that you must simply say no to or let your body say no. Don't allow other folk to speak that you won't have any money, that you won't have success, that it's gonna take you longer than it took somebody else to do something, that your dreams won't come true or that your gift won't make room for you. Don't allow them to say that God has not anointed you and called you or that you'll never be anything or never do anything worth acknowledging. That you didn't come from the right side of the railroad tracks. That your skin color is not the right color. That your gender is 
not the right gender, that your orientation is not the right one, Lord, that your hair is too nappy or your grades aren't good enough. Uh, don't allow anybody to speak those things over you. Uh, you got to tell the devil and all of his folks that he is a liar uh, and that you shall have what God says you can have uh, and that you will do all that God says you can do. Uh, church, don't allow anybody to speak negative over your life. Uh, tell the devil no in his face and make it move on to somebody else. Uh, then I need to tell you, you got to take charge uh, and begin to speak the affirmative over your own life uh, and declare the affirmative in the ethos and airways on today. Uh, declare all that God has spoken to you. Uh, declare all that you've seen in dreams and visions uh, and watch it come to pass. Uh, you see, if you don't believe it, uh, who else will? I'm going to talk to the lights today. Uh, if you don't receive it for yourself, uh, who else is going to receive it? Uh, if you don't declare your own breakthrough, uh, your own deliverance, uh, your own power, uh, your own new life, uh, your own next level, your own overflow, uh, who else is going to declare it over you? Uh, God has not given you a mouth, uh, a voice and lips and life for you not to declare some things over your own self. Uh, God has not given you that uh, for you not to believe and trust that it will come to pass. Uh, that's why I like for us to say yes to God's will uh, and yes to God's way. Uh, yes to God's divine power. Uh, yes to God, everything that God desires to do in us, uh, through us and for us. Uh, God simply needs some people who will speak up. God needs some people who will say like they used to say, I'm black and I'm proud. Say, I believe in, in my God and I trust God to do it. God needs people who can speak up and let the devil know you know the power that you have dwelling in you, given to you by God. God needs some people who will speak up and stand on his word. You will not allow anybody to declare anything over your life that God for you. The question thus becomes what will now be your declaration. Is there a path that God is guiding you on to get you to say a word that will change your life for good? Might it be time for you to recognize a, a new level of power within? With anything that leads to something else, there's usually a path or a process that one must take. Here in the text, we see that in order to help this servant, the centurion took it upon himself to get someone on the path to Jesus in, in hopes that he would make everything all right. And in order to get on the right path now, Sometimes you must deal with what comes in your mind first. We know that there is an old symbol that old people used to use to talk about when discussing life and when talking about making decisions about the direction you will go in. They use the symbol of the fork. Anybody remember that on today? Oftentimes we come to a fork in the road and we have to make a decision about what we are going to to do. Uh, many times when we get to the fork, we need a little help uh, with knowing which way to go or which one will be best for us. Uh, some of us are at forks in the road right now on our journey. Uh, some of us are at forks on our job. Uh, some of us are at forks about our relationships. Uh, some of us are at forks about our living. Uh, living spaces. Will we move or will we stay? Uh, we are at the fork about our city and some are even at the fork uh, about the God that they always believed in but now have some questions about. Uh, we are simply church uh, at a point where we must decide uh, which way we want to go uh, and which way will benefit us the most uh, and help us to follow God. Uh, here the centurion sent some men uh, to get Jesus or even just to get him to speak a word uh, over the servant so that the outcome would change for the better. Now for this man to do this, something inside of his mind and something in his heart must have told him there is something powerful about Jesus Christ our Lord. Especially 
especially when you know he was reluctant uh, from what the scripture alludes to. He was reluctant to doing this at first. Uh, so I want to tell you today, uh, when you are at the fork on your journey, uh, when you are at that point of not knowing which way to go uh, or which way to turn uh, or whether to keep going or whether to turn around, uh, and I believe some people are there on today, uh, when you really don't know what lines ahead for you uh, and you have to make a decision uh, and make a decision now uh, because you can't remain at the place where you are forever. Uh, something inside of you uh, has got to take charge. Uh, something inside of you has got to stand up uh, and it help you make a decision. Uh, in other words, you can't stay at this fork place forever. Uh, you got to decide to turn left or go to the right. You got to look at the split in the road and make a decision. Uh, church, when you have to make a decision that will impact you for many years to come, uh, you got to let your mind and your heart guide you. Uh, your mind has to remind you uh, about the man who can do anything but fail. Uh, I need your mind to remind you uh, about the man who works in miracles, uh, does signs and wonders, uh, and causes the dead to rise and the mute to talk. Uh, your mind has to remind you uh, about how wonderful uh, he has been and what he's done for others. Uh, he'll do the same for you if you'll just trust him. Uh, your mind has to remind you uh, that when nobody else was there for you, uh, the Lord was there. Uh, the Lord has never left you or forsaken you. Uh, and that God uh, is always going to be there. Uh, your mind has to shift you uh, and let you know who it is uh, that you need to speak about uh, and call on uh, and get advice from on this journey. Uh, church, your mind has got to reflect on the Lord uh, and let you know uh, whatever way you choose to go, uh, God's going to be there. Uh, if you go to the left, God's going to be there. Uh, if you go to the today, but I know I can't do anything uh, and be a success if my mind is not focused on the Lord. Uh, that's why we tell you to make up your mind. Uh, make up your mind you'll call his name uh, before you call anybody else's name. Uh, make up your mind you'll seek Jesus uh, before you seek your friends and your family. Uh, make up your mind you'll trust the Lord uh, above everybody and everything else. Uh, somebody Know that whichever way you go on the fork, he will be there. The centurion knew that this outcome was not going to change if Jesus wasn't a part of the equation. He knew that Jesus could come in and, and turn everything around and make everything all right. But he needed to go down the road where Jesus was so that he could get some help and have the best possible outcome in this situation. Some of us have been trying to change our outcomes without Jesus in the equation. If you don't have Jesus as a factor in your equation, then you're sure to come up short. You're sure to come up with the wrong answer every time. Decide that you'll go the way where Jesus is. Decide that you'll make Jesus your choice. Decide that Jesus is the only way to come out victorious and see God in the end. Make up your mind today. Stop being wishy-washy and make up your mind that you're going to serve the Lord, that you're going to stand with God, that you're going to have a relationship with God, and that you're going with the Lord all the way. Now here we see that the centurion appears to be very clear on who Jesus was. The Bible says when Jesus was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou should enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. So here he, he makes it very clear, church, that he's very sure about the power that Jesus has and, and the anointing 
anointing that Jesus walks in. I believe people have got to be sure about the God that they serve. People have got to be confident about the Lord that they submit to on today. When you are sure of his power, you don't tell other folk, I hope the Lord will hear my prayer and answer. You tell the Lord, I know God is going to answer my prayer. I'm walking in expectation each and every day. When you're sure about God's power, you don't tell folk, I hope the Lord will heal my body from sickness and disease. You declare, I know God's got healing power. God's going to heal me. God's going to heal my mama. God's going to heal my daddy. God's going to heal my wife. God's going to heal my husband. God's going to heal my community. God's even going to heal my church. No devil in hell is going to block my healing on today. When you're sure of his power, you don't tell other folk, I don't know why God allowed me to lose my job, to lose my house, to lose my car, lose my business. You tell folk, God has got something better for me. God had to move me out of there to get me to something else. God's shifting the atmosphere so that my life will be better, so that everything he promised me, I will be positioned to receive. God's doing a new thing with me. God is working on me. God is working on my faith. I was only there for a season anyhow. My season is over. Now I'm stepping to my next level because that's behind me. I'm moving forward with the Lord. I just got to hold out to see what the end's going to be. Church, we got to look at what our words say about our faith in God. What our statements say regarding what we believe about the power of God. If you're a believer, then demonstrate that you're a believer with your words and with your actions. Don't let the world wonder who it is that you serve. And if you really believe in that one that you're serving, and if you have any faith, if we want the blessings of the Lord, we got to make sure our actions are demonstrating that we believe in the power of God. If you believe in the power of God, you'll talk like you serve a God who's got all power in his hands. If you believe in the power of God, you'll walk like you serve a God who can do anything but fail. If you believe in the power of God, you'll speak like it's already done. You're just waiting on the release. You're waiting on the manifestation. You're waiting for of it. Somebody needs to declare it's already done on today. That which you've been waiting on is already done. That which you're praying about is already done. That which you've been seeking God's face on is already done. That which you've been releasing in the atmosphere is already done. That which you almost gave up on is already done because you decided to hold out and see what the end will be. Church, if you believe in the creator, See it come to pass in your life. But you must make a decision at the fork and declare the power of God that you serve. The centurion believed that Jesus had the power to heal his servant. He demonstrated with his actions that he understood the power that Jesus had to heal his servant by seeking the Lord's help. Then he decreed it with his words. The Bible says that the friends of the centurion said to Jesus while they were approaching the house, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. And when they returned to the house, the Bible informs us that the servant was whole that had been sick. Wow. So here it is clear that his declaration of belief released the servant's healing. 
Sometimes uh, I'm going to take y'all somewhere else today. Sometimes it's, it's not your faith that will heal you. Uh, because sometimes you're too far gone uh, to even know what's happening or to call on God's name. Uh, it's the other folks' faith uh, that will cause your healing uh, to be released in the atmosphere. Uh, somebody missed it. Let me see if I can bring this around for you. Uh, y'all remember the man who brought his friends, uh, who was brought by his friends uh, and carried to the house where Jesus was uh, to get his healing that day. Uh, well, we never heard in scripture uh, that this man asked his friends uh, to take him to Jesus. Uh, we don't read uh, that the man asked when they got there because there were so many people uh, that he asked them uh, to take the roof off of the house. Uh, we assume uh, that he probably had given up. Uh, we can assume that he might have listened uh, to all the naysayers around him uh, who were saying how hard it was uh, to get to Jesus because of the crowds. Uh, I would speculate here first now, uh, or even I suggest here uh, that his friends uh, of faith got together uh, and said we're not going to let our friend uh, we know and understand the power of Jesus and we can get him to the man that heals the sick, to the man that raises the dead, to the man who speaks and dumb people talk. So the scripture now alerts us that they took it upon themselves to get their friend to Jesus the best way that they could. and lower him on a mat in front of Jesus, then that's what their faith pushed them to do. I believe it's in the atmosphere that if you would just step up and speak a word over the people around you, that you know don't have the power to declare it over themselves, then something would begin to turn around in those people's lives. If you would begin over your city, over your state, over your neighborhood, over this country, some things will begin to turn around right where you live and turn around for those that you're connected to. If you will begin to declare a word over your family, over your marriage, over your relationships, some things will begin to turn around.